Let's run the floor through the action in the NBA last night. If you were just joining us, what a series going on between the Knicks and the Hawks. Knicks rally from behind last night to even up that series. 101-92, the final. Derrick Rose has been the best player for New York. He had 26, so that series goes to Atlanta, tied at a game apiece. Also one each are Utah and Memphis. The Jazz tying it up with Donovan Mitchell coming back after a sprained ankle caused him to miss game one. He scored 25. Uh, Utah won at 141-129. John Morant had 47 in the loss. And then the story that had all of us talking earlier this morning, the fan attending the Sixers-Wizards game right there. You see this idiot dumping popcorn on Russell Westbrook, who was being helped off the floor, getting injured late in a game. The Sixers would win easily. But afterwards, everyone was talking, including Russell. To be blatantly honest, man, it is getting out of hand, uh, especially for me. Um, just... The amount of disrespect, the amount of just fans just doing whatever the f they want to do. It's just, it's out of pocket, man. It's out of pocket, seriously. Like, in the other setting, uh, you know, I'm, I'm all for the fans enjoying the game and having fun. And, you know, it's part of sports. I get it. Uh, but there's certain things that cross the line. Uh, and any other setting, I know for a fact that fans and uh, they want to come up. And, a guy wouldn't come on the street and pour popcorn on my head because he know what happened. A reaction from so many places, including from LeBron James, who tweeted, we as the players want to see who threw that popcorn while he was leaving the game. There's cameras all over the arena. Protect the players. It should be pointed out. They did identify the person. They did escort him out. We'll wait and see what else comes of that. And again, we opened with this, and Seth Greenberg is back with us here. We talked about this earlier, but I wanted those just joining us to at least Hear what Russell said and see what LeBron tweeted. Meanwhile, we've talked about what happened. Now let's talk about what goes forward. Lakers and Suns. And Anthony Davis clearly has been the key for the Lakers. What was the difference in game one and game two for AD? Well, you think about it. First and foremost, he got 24 more touches in game two. They got to play through him. They got to play through him early and often. And then when he caught the ball, he's got to be more aggressive. He goes to the line 21 times in game two, only five in game one because he settled. Here we're going to see him catch the ball in game one. Now, this is an easy catch. He's catching the ball right there in the middle of the floor, which is a great place to catch the basketball. But if he's going to catch it here, can he make that shot? Yes, but he's got an open side right here, Greeny. He's got a side to drive it, attack, play downhill, get to the free throw line, make a play. Doesn't, settles, misses the jumper. Shot he can make, but he can get a better shot. He did that in game two here. A ton of side isolation right here. Left side, they love to isolate him on the left side. Aiton's guarding him right here. Attack, get a paint touch, make a play. Think about this. When he touched the ball in game two, they scored almost twice as many points as, game, as they did in game one. Here he settles, shoots a little fadeaway. Good shot, shot he can make, but not a great shot. You want to play downhill. Game two, different mindset. Playing through him, and he's aggressive. There's that side isolation on the left side. Same matchup. Eight. they've got good movement here. LeBron goes through. you got to play him. they got spacing all over the floor. That's great. Look at the difference. Anthony Davis here. What does he do? Catches it inside pivots, attacks, plays through the chest to Aiton, playing downhill. That's how you get to the line 21 times. Little side adulation, two man play with LeBron James. Again, on the left hand side of the floor. Dunker spot is covered. You got shot makers on the weak side. Doesn't settle, doesn't shoot the fadeaway. What does he do this time? Rips it, attacks, gets to the rim, and gets to the free throw line. Anthony Davis, Lakers want to win a championship. All right, you know at the end of the game, LeBron's taken over. But this guy's got to get touches. Two assists compared to seven assists in game two. 21 free throws compared to five. They scored twice as many points when Anthony Davis touched the ball in game two as game one. So I guess the question is, if he plays like that, are they again the team to beat in the Western Conference? Yeah, they are. Because when you have... Anthony Davis playing downhill and attacking. You've got LeBron James, and then you spread the court with shot makers. You know they're going to defend. Defense isn't the issue. Offensively, this dude is one of the best players in the world. Play like that every night. To do that, he needs to get touches. At the end of the game, LeBron takes over. You know, I'm thinking back to last year in the bubble. They lose a game one to Portland and then sweep it. They lose a game one to Houston and then sweep it. Are we looking at what they call a gentleman's sweep again in this series? I don't think it's going to be a sweep, but I think they're going to win the series. And, and, and that's the thing. Look, game one, you're trying to figure out who you are and how you're going to win in this moment in time in the playoffs, which is a totally different game mm -hmm. than the regular season. Anthony Davis deferred. He should never defer. He should never settle. 
He needs to attack. Can he make a three-point shot? Yeah, but he's a 26% three-point shooter. Play downhill, attack, and then let LeBron take over at the end. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.